Center for Innovation and Technology is offering you a golden opportunity to speak directly to your market at an affordable price. We also offer media training workshops, live streaming, documentary production, and events management. Get in touch with us today on the following numbers. Plus 263-867-711-0290 or 0718-100-235. Don't forget to subscribe to our social media platforms. Like our Facebook page, Center for Innovation and Technology. Follow us on Twitter at SiteZW. And you can also check out our website, www.site.org. My name is Zenzel and welcome to Asaki Online. This is the Breakfast Club. Every day we tackle different issues and we talk to different individuals who are making a mark in our community. And today in our program we are talking to a very promising, energetic, brilliant uh, young, uh, young man. Yes, he's a young man. Yeah. Uh, by the name Wutolezwe uh, Horsi Nyati. We should emphasize because uh, I'll ask him what it means later. Uh, he just was recently appointed to be the regional director of the National Art Gallery of Zimbabwe in Bulawayo. Welcome to the program. Thank you, Mr. Ndele, for inviting me. Uh, of course, uh, I suppose it means the king. Yes, yes, yes. That is the uh, Sutu language. Uh, we are of the Sutu extract, even if we are now here in Zimbabwe, but uh, our historical origins trace us back to South Africa of the Sutu extract in Hosi. Uh, is a celebration really of our ethnic identity in the history. So we welcome uh, King in the city. Thank you very much. Yes. Uh, I mean, uh, congratulations for being appointed the, the director of uh, the National Art uh, Gallery in Thank you very much. It's my honor indeed. So uh, tell me, I mean, the, the day you received the news, I mean, uh, can you briefly describe where were you and what was the reaction? I was seized and very pleased with some other commitment, uh, but I was expecting an email to that effect on that particular day. But it so happened that I was out of network, so I could only then wait until the end of the day when I returned back to the city. Uh, and that was when I received the email. It was on a Friday. I then had the benefit of the weekend to reflect uh, on what the email meant and how best to respond, but uh, long story short, I accepted the offer and I'm ready to serve. So what does this mean to you as a, a young person, you know, and a, a director of such an important institution? Well, definitely for me it's a significant uh, component of my career progression. You know, I'm coming from a non-governmental space, but now I am progressing into the government space but still doing uh, that which I like the most, which is cultural management. But uh, I understand there's someone who has done policy, social work, uh, that ultimately whatever work we do as nine state actors, it takes government effort, government action for meaningful reform and transformation to be realized. So I think I am now in a vantage space to be able to secure some of the ideas that have been propagating as a nine state actor. Uh, the extent of that success is something that we will see as we progress. But for me, uh, that is the exciting bit to be able to be you know, a practical change agent uh, with the necessary powers uh, uh, to transform at least the cultural agenda in Ulawayo and beyond. You know, we, we have always, uh, some of us refer to, most people refer to the art, I don't know, people always call it the art gallery. Yes. You, you know, and uh, in my introduction, I was calling it the gallery. And you are talking about the, the cultural management. Mm -hmm. uh, how do we, I mean, is it just the art gallery or is the whole space of culture and the development? The statutory mandate is the National Gallery of Zimbabwe Act, Chapter 2509, in particular, Section 7. The idea is to be uh, the vehicle that champions the development of visual arts in Zimbabwe uh, to the extent of collecting, you know. Uh, seminar works of art generating public interest in visual art and uh, generally supporting artistic creativity uh, in Bulawayo, Mat North, Mat South, uh, Midlands, and Masuigo. Those are the provinces that uh, I will be covering. So, definitely, that is the mandate. And uh, while we are principally visual art, 
a practice as dictated that the gallery is now a hub of sorts, at least in terms of allowing other art forms to thrive and flourish in the space. Uh, festivals do some of their activities in the space, musicians come and launch their albums, uh, organizations come and do their conferences. So it's now a multi-purpose space beyond just being a collector and displayer of works of visual art. Yeah, so you, you are new in this uh, business, this you have been doing that for, for quite a while, and you, you, you understand your, your, your last studies, you are actually looking at uh, cultural uh, management. Uh, you know, how important do you think uh, places like the Altanai are in our uh, culture, in our daily lives? Well, uh, first and foremost, you know, there are multiple you know, ideas that we want to advance. First and foremost, you know, Bulawayo as a city has suffered magnificent deindustrialization. And one of the elements that I studied as a Sheldon in school was the issue of creative cities, how arts, culture, and heritage can be used to regenerate you know, uh, public spaces. And I've seen this in practice, at least close to Zimbabwe in South Africa. There is an area called the Marble Name Precinct. Uh, it had run down industries, the private sector was brought in, public institutions were brought in, you know, as part of a collective effort to see how best can we regenerate these spaces. So for me, uh, I want to believe that is a, a process that I want to meaningfully contribute towards to say we have these buildings, they are now derelict, dysfunctional, disused. Uh, how can arts, culture and heritage be used to revitalize those spaces? That is one element, you know, and if you talk of Ulao as a cultural hub, uh, I know some say it's a myth, some say it's a reality, but at least let the gallery be the nucleus, you know, in terms of radiating cultural expression in the region and beyond. Uh, people should be proud of being Ulao and if we are cultural capital, what is the gallery doing to project that kind of outlook? So for me, those are some of the information that I look forward to seeing, you know, over the next few years. Yeah, we are um, talking about the UK and these other places. There's this you know, growth of uh, you know, creative spaces, creative hubs that are really contributing to the economy. I mean, is our cultural side or artistic side that viable in Zimbabwe that they only rely on the next, that it can actually make uh, a difference to our local economies? Definitely, it can, uh, but the challenge uh, has been structural. We have a lot of people who survive exclusively through art, but what has been lacking is that kind of scientific, uh, regular research to quantify uh, the contribution of the sector to the GDP, even at a local level or even nationally. So those are some of the deficiencies that we still have at a structural level and government really has to play a leading role in that regard in terms of championing scientific research uh, to quantify the value of music that the people produce. Now we're even talking of the uh, engagement and re-engagement in the Zimbabwe government foreign policy. And you will agree that uh, you know, the leading powers in the West, what they export the most is what they call soft power. And soft power is derived from cultural assets. You know, uh, our impressions of America today are largely through film and music. And we have a lot of content produced by our artists in the city. So to what extent can the art sector, you know, connect with central government in terms of propagating and, you know, sharing that Zimbabwe narrative uh, to say this is the Zimbabwe story. Like what South Africa has done and what Nigeria has done, Zimbabwe is a sleeping giant. Uh, in that regard. So government has to be seen playing an active role in terms of supporting directly the artists to produce the content and distribute it widely. I am happy this ZTV is digitizing. Uh, what is now lacking is the support to the practitioners to create the content and promote it uh, to the rest of the world. In that way, the synergies will be more meaningful. There is always uh, expectations. Uh, you are young, uh, most of the artists that are dealing with will be young people and uh, people will expect a lot of you. And how, I mean, already I'm feeling the pressure of uh, you know, people expecting you to do their jobs and to really change everything within a short space of time. Wait, wait, wait. Uh, of course, expectations are high and I know, uh, you know, youthfulness uh, always arouses certain expectations. Uh, that of innovation, creativity, flexibility, reflexibility. So I know those are the expectations, the legitimate expectations at 
least. So, but uh, we are alive to the operating context. Uh, that is one of the elements that I'm seized with now, you know, the environmental scanning and environmental mapping to say before we do anything meaningful, uh, what is the context and what are the expectations of the people and to what extent can we align those expectations with the common date of the Kairan as it's stated in the uh, National Kairan of Zimbabwe Act. Uh, but the overarching principle that will guide my operations and engagement with stakeholders is the principle of mutual benefit. Uh, people have their expectations from the gallery with our own mandate to fulfill to what extent to we harmonize those expectations and mandates uh, so that at least whatever engagement we, we do, it's a win-win kind of situation. So for me, that would be the guiding uh, philosophy. Probably my question would be, what's your, your daily duties? What do you do at the gallery? What, what's your mandate? First and foremost, really, it is to set the overall strategic direction of the Kalari uh, to say 2019, maybe to 2024, uh, what is it that we want to have achieved, what are the milestones, you know, in terms of priority setting, agenda setting, I'm expected to lead that process and guiding the overall programming. And programming comes at a cost. Where does that money come from? Government supports certain activities and doesn't support some. Where do we unlock that kind of value? Who can we engage as stakeholders? And uh, a gallery as a public entity is there to serve the public. To what extent can we increase the scope of our programming to attract a diverse and increased uh, visitorship? You know, and I'm expected to build relations, uh, long-lasting relations with the artists uh, in particular because it's an art gallery. We work a lot with visual artists. So who are those artists, how can we identify them, how can we nurture them, and how can we create linkages for them to export their art content beyond uh, the material and region to the rest of the static region, you know, and create those synergies such that if we have uh, vibrant artists, they would attract audiences, and that should also attract more investment into the space. So those kinds of uh, relationships are what I would be expected to manage on a day-to-day -day basis beyond the overall uh, you know, leadership of the institution as a cultural enterprise. What is it, that one thing that you say uh, in the next five years, this is what I want to achieve for the color of Zimbabwe? Um, one of the elements is what I've already listed in terms of uh, you know, at least influencing the creative regeneration of Bulawayo. Uh, the gallery has to be seen uh, to be a vibrant cultural space beyond just visual art. But if Bulawayo is the perceived cultural capital, certainly the gallery has to be at the center uh, of that kind of uh, cultural projection. I am also very much interested in terms of cultural diplomacy, uh, which is what I have mentioned again to say, uh, if the government is speaking the language of engagement and re-engagement, that cannot be done at the exclusion of people-to-people -people engagement. And art is that vehicle of facilitating people-to-people -people, uh, engagement. And I'm also very passionate about uh, digitization. You know, I look forward to a day when I officially open an exhibition, which is a virtual reality kind of experience, and I challenge site in that regard. You know, reimagining Ebola in 50 years, you know, then you just give people that uh, kind of equipment, you know, and they see the 50-year Bulawayo projection, you know, that kind of uh, uh, imagination, uh, if digitization can be strengthened, I'll be very much excited. Uh, then art also, uh, which is uh, what would be my ideology, it should not just be art for art's sake. Yes, that is what we will do, but we will also approach uh, it in such a way that we integrate art in all other developmental processes. Uh, what are the possibilities for art in prisons as part of rehabilitation? You know, art in health facilities, those who are undergoing recuperation, how can art be used as part of their therapy? You know, uh, art in schools, the education curriculum now promotes visual art. Uh, I want to believe the color has to be at the center of that agenda, at least in terms of skills development of the teachers uh, doing outreaches, you know, beyond just Gulawayo in terms of outreach. To what extent can we facilitate other minority ethnic communities to have 
their tangible and intangible heritage reflected in the gallery space. You know, uh, as I indicated, the gallery covers Bulawayo, North, 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 South, Miklians, and Maswingo. But most of the time, you see a lot of Bulawayo. But we want to go maybe as deep as Bulilima, talk to the Kalanga, go to Cholocho, bring the same culture, you know, have their artifacts, uh, their culture reflected in the space so that it's clear that the center is there to serve the interests of the diversity of our cultures in this region. So those are some of the key uh, ideas that I have. But uh, on the wall, the overall vision strategic plan will be informed by the stakeholders because that is what I'm seized with right now, you know, talking to people, getting their expectations, what they want, and how best we can then come up with this com comprehensive strategic vision. What's your message to the artist who is looking forward to uh, engaging with you in the next uh, few months or days or years? The color is open for business. <laughs> if I may say, well, of course, uh, I say that lightheartedly. But the message is that uh, we are in open space. We are very much receptive of all progressive ideas uh, in the principle of mutual benefit. Bring your ideas. Uh, we also share our expectations. And jointly we see how best all of us can advance uh, our interests. But uh, indeed, uh, from now on going forward, anyone who has a, an itching idea that they want to share beyond just visual art, bring it along, because like I indicated, the vibrancy has to be cross-cutting beyond just visual art. We want to support and allow other art forms to flourish as well, because the space is a public space. Anyone with artistic interests is more than welcome to come along. Thank you very much. I would like to thank Butolezo Nyati, who is the regional director of the National Gallery of Zimbabwe in Bulawayo. It's always enriching to uh, chat to people who have a better vision, uh, uh, excited about the days ahead, and we hope that uh, we'll be engaging with him in his work and also, you know, share ideas. And uh, maybe a year from now, we'll uh, invite him again and talk about what he has achieved, the challenges, and how the future looks like. My name is Zenzel Endeavor. Till we meet again tomorrow, have a good day.